CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Once again, beautiful pictures courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp. As you look down on Tropicana Field here in St. Petersburg on a day that is all sweetness and light outside, inside it's all hectic intensity and activity. Welcome once again to Penn's Oil of the Half, everyone. The score at halftime is UConn 36 and Ohio State 35. I am joined, uh, as usual, by Clark Kellogg and Rick Majerus. And Clark, wait, look at the smile on his face. What a first half for the Buckeyes. It was a good first half both ways. Early on, UConn was able to surge, taking advantage of Ohio State's turnovers. And then the latter part of the first half, it was just the opposite. Good defense by Ohio State. Greg, I think this one is going to stay as tight as me in an airplane laboratory. <laughs> and I like Ohio State in that situation because of Scooney Penn's ability in the clutch. All right, let's talk to the coach about what you saw technically out there on the floor in the first half. Well, I like the fact that Ohio State went to the zone. They got out of that zone, though. Connecticut did a good job with that high pick and got shots. What what Connecticut was what, what Connecticut did a great job of was getting back. Here we see Scooney Penn pushing the ball. Watch Connecticut's transition defense. They get the ball out of control. They get back. Watch more match up to the ball. Watch all I mean. Scooney Penn forces the issue. He does not play with poise and composure early. Connecticut converts this into a fast break basket. Converted rebounds into fast break baskets. Got the numerical advantage. They did a good job later on in the half of eliminating those mistakes and turnovers. All right, coach, 36-35, UConn with a one-point lead. Well, it's I look for the little fella to have a volcanic eruption, and if he does, I think that gives Ohio State a great chance to pull it off. It's all we can do to keep him out of uniform. And, and what's he doing half? in that bathroom that he's so tight in there? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Coming up, we'll send you back to Jim and Billy courtside for the second half of Ohio State and UConn. The winner will play for the national championship on Monday night. Thanks for watching. Penzo at the half. We'll see you again right after the game. Meanwhile, take a look at perhaps the fanciest pass of the game thus far. Khaled Elamine of UConn with one of his four first half assists. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semi-Final Game is sponsored by Oldsmobile. Bud Light. Arthur Anderson. And by Propecia. There were eight lead changes in that first half. One half to go to find Monday night's first entrant in the championship game. Pepsi One presents the virtual playbook. Jim, one of the things we'll see right here is Ohio State utilizing good half-court philosophy. They're going to set up a screen on the inside and then a good backdoor cut by Michael Red. Now watch what happens. Connecticut playing up much too high, not protecting the paint whatsoever. So when Freeman goes out to protect against Red getting the ball, he makes the, the cut. Nobody there to help out from the weak side. Good execution by Ohio State. Both teams need more of that in the second half. Too much one-on-one -on -one play. They got him in trouble. Right at the end of the first half, the block by Singleton drew quite a reaction. A chest thump from Scooney Penn. <laughs> Singleton got a little disoriented. He thought it was Hamilton. He went after the Husky instead. Can you get thrown out of a game for, uh, hitting, for, your own for hitting your own team? No way. <laughs> oh, boy. Both teams start off the way they did the game. Vosco back in there with Johnson. And those two fouls on Vosco when Jim Calhoun did not want to take him out in that first half that early really hurt Connecticut. Brown on the wing, three-pointer to start the half. And Freeman with his fifth rebound to lead the Huskies in this one. And there's a case, Jim, in the NCAA tournament, guys got to step up and make shots. Now, Brown's wide open because Connecticut really putting two men on red when he drives. You've got to be able to make that jump shot. Brown not ready to take it. There's the same backdoor cut we just showed. Oh, and El I mean had lost it for a moment, but a good assist. And he points ahead to Vosco, thanks him. And the reason it works so well, again, nobody in that paint whatsoever to help out from the weak side. And Brown, the freshman, starts off with two tough plays right here in the second half. Hurts his ball club on both. This is out of Johnson's range. He's going to take it anyway. Out of his range. 
And Bosco ahead to El Amin. Bosco trailing. Bounce pass back to him. Hey, it's give and take. I do it on the last trip. You give it back this time. Jim, anytime you can get a guy to take a bad shot, you've got a big advantage in basketball. It's the worst thing a guy can do is take a shot his teammates don't expect. But there's never anybody there to rebound. So consequently, the other team's off and running. The worst thing you can do, take a bad shot. Nice change by Scooney Penn. Penn, he felt the presence of Moore from behind. Well, even if you beat Moore, he's right there to defend you. Brown in the lane. Got to convert here. Tipped up, too strong by Johnson. He may have been able to put two hands on it. Absolutely. You know, on that putback. Let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Jim, that play where Bosco just scored on the break, that's the last thing Coach Jim O'Brien wanted to see out of Ohio State's defense. He said, we have to stop them in transition. We especially have to keep an eye on Hamilton because he has a way of leaking out there and scoring on fast breaks. Jim. Savovich in for the Buckeyes or Brown. And Jim, you made a very good point. You notice Johnson went up just with his left hand, which is his weak hand. He goes up there. He had an easy putback for two for Ohio State. So they've had some opportunities here in the second half and not converted. El Amin and cut them off. Good solid screen there. Nice hedge move by Johnson. He's cut it off. Fighting through the screen. Gonna be called that one on red. Now what we saw in the first half is that Ohio State did a good job not getting any foul trouble of their own. And in that last uh, sequence, they were going to try to go ahead and really go out, pressure on the ball because they had a foul to give. Ohio State not going to let Connecticut get an easy basket on the inbounds. They go back to their 2-3 zone. Matching up out of it. Richard Hamilton alone over here in the corner. They can get him the ball. Red recognizes where Hamilton is and kind of gives up some space. 15 on the shot clock. Hamilton will handle it. Got to play in man to man because he's a guy that can come off that screen and score. Has three defenders and banks at home. Jim, that was a terrific wow. play by Hamilton. He saw the 2 3 zone. He knew the clock was working against him. Ohio State should have recognized that, know that he's not going to give up the ball and almost in the zone play him man to man. Almost like a box and one in that situation. First six points of the half to the Huskies. Ohio State has missed all five tries in this half. And a whistle. Freeman on a push before the shot. <laughs> we see right here, nobody picking up the most dangerous guy in the court, not only because Hamilton's a scorer, but he's got the ball in his hands. Too late as three converge, and there you see his versatility as an offensive player. A slasher, an outside shooter, and a finisher. The high dribble did not get him in trouble. And that foul is called on Freeman, his second. And remember, Ohio State has converted on these out-of-bounds twice. They don't get that one. Red lost control of it. Freeman deed him up. And will they say a reach in on Hamilton? You know, Red has gotten, Jim, three balls that have been knocked away or blocked of his and then almost got a chance to put him back up and score. He did that in the first half on two occasions. First foul on Richard Hamilton. Johnson over Bosco. Wow. That's just a wild grenade. And here's Freeman with the rebound. Now, the guy's back at St. John's probably wondering, why didn't he do that against no. us? And Moore at the other end. I think Ricky Moore is making some bad judgments with the dribble. He did it in the first half. He's taking his team out of the offense, trying to beat him. That's not his game. His game is to defend and distribute the ball. And Moore defending. Oh. And somehow he squirts it in. Sensational play underneath. What a scoop shot. First points of the half for Ohio State. Took over three and a half minutes. Hamilton again to the line for two. The charge, charge on Hamilton. Hamilton. Here we're going to see this dribble penetration. Penn gets the corner. And what made it, though, was that incredible shot. Watch this scoop underneath the defensive hand. Tremendous. 
It's tough to beat Ricky Moore. That's about the way, only way you can do it. Moore fighting over the top of that screen by Singleton. Tries to fight it again. And second time, no. Freeman. Huskies are breaking. Hamilton with Sabovich defending. And one. Two great scores. Finding out ways to put that ball up. Jim, we look at the shooting percentages in the first half. Both teams right up there, one above 50, and right just underneath it. We see Hamilton going up, using the left hand beautifully. I think back of field goal shooting percentages in the final four. Who will ever forget? 22 for 28, Villanova. Remember that? 78%. And the team will see out here right now, Ohio State, back in... In 1960 and in 61, Ohio State in back-to-back -back years shot 67% and 63% in 60 to win the national championship. And in 61, they lost to Cincinnati in a great overtime thriller. That's filling it up when you're shooting over 60% and lose again. There's Richard Sr. Son just converts a three-point play. We'll be right back. Well, this is the fourth time in the 90s, one conference has put in seven teams in the tournament. In fact, the Big Ten doing it three different times. This is the first time anyone converted back twice with Ohio State and Michigan State here. Well, Jim, seven in, two to the final four, an overall record in NCAA tournament play this year of 13 and five. Does anybody want to argue that the Big Ten from top to bottom this year was the top conference in the country? And just think about it, Illinois, the 11th place team in the Big Ten, worked their way to the finals of the Big Ten tournament. So they really had some depth. Could have been eight, because if you look at the worst seed that a Big Ten team uh, received, it was Purdue as a 10. So you have to think they would have had eight had Illinois gotten the automatic. Red. And Bosco had it for a moment. El Amin is there. This Ohio State team was last in the Big Ten a year ago. El Amin on the drive. Again, the Huskies blow the chance to get set. Three and on one. Three on one for the Buckeyes. Back to Sabovich. Wow, that two. was a dangerous pass. I'm not so, so sure Singleton passed it. I think he just lost it out of his hand. It worked out all right. Every time you think Connecticut ready to blow this thing open, Ohio State comes back. And the reason in both halves has been uh, a couple of short trips where some now not very good uh, use of the clock type possessions. Yeah, Ricky Moore's judgment to try to drive all the way, I think, cost him. I think he should try to keep this team in their offense. Well, I mean, did it on the previous trip. Six ha seconds on the shot clock. Hamilton sitting down. Who's going to be the score? No whistle. One second on the shot clock. More in time. Shot clock violation. Again, there's a situation where the judgment by Moore is such he has got to get his team in the offense. Hamilton not on that bench long. Jim Calhoun is going to go ahead and make some changes. Mooring comes out, Hamilton right back in. And what he's hollering about is why didn't you come to take the ball so that we could get some offense started? I'm sure that Jim Calhoun wanted Hamilton to have a little bit longer rest when he had a nice working margin there. Red. Oh, sensational. Well, you can see why he is such a big scorer and so hard to defend. He is an excellent dribbler. He's one of the few guys in college basketball I've seen in a while that can score off the dribble. Guys normally can score off the dunk or they can score off the cross-court pass. But not many guys can beat you off the dribble with a jump shot the way he can. He led the Big Ten in scoring as a freshman a year ago in Red's basket. Cuts the lead to four. It had been eight. Young man was very upset when he got picked second team all Big Ten. Can't blame him. Yeah. You know? Had to share the points with Penn. Four on the shot clock. Travel. Hamilton oh, on the drive. It traveled. Red stayed right with him. That's one of Hamilton's pet moves. And Red was right there. I'm giving Red some credit defensively today. You think of him as a scorer, but when he's been matched up with Hamilton one-on-one, -on -one, even though Hamilton scored some points, Red's done a pretty good job. There's that dribble again. Look at that. He just penetrated. Head to El Amin. Left hand for two. Well, there's a situation where Red shoots out at the top of the key. Nobody rotated to get back on defense. And Connecticut is very good on that outlet pass. Now Jim O'Brien has no inside scoring except Singleton right now. 
Johnson out of the ball game. And Singleton has really been quiet. He hasn't been coming to meet that ball. Reese kicks it back out. Great defense hey. by Moore. Back to Singleton. And Saunders swipes it. Pretty good elevation by Singleton that time, Jim. He's got a good, had a good shot. Saunders steps up, jumper. Wow, from the outside, nice touch. Edmund Saunders. Jim Calhoun really likes this young man, thinks he can be quite a player. Back to an eight-point lead. And there was the difference. Saunders hits the shot that Brown didn't hit before. A guy off the bench contributing. <laughs> Hamilton pleads his case to no avail. It's his third. That's four. He's, he's had three cheap ones in this game. There's that outlet pass, beautifully thrown. Elamine can use the right or the left hand to finish. Also, Jones Rashmel Jones. Jones will come in, and Hamilton with the three sits. Bosco also taken out. Freeman in. An opportunity here, even though we talked about Connecticut's deep bench with Hamilton sitting down. This is the time Ohio State's got to make a move. Good job by Freeman to realize that the screener Singleton was really setting him up to try to break to the basket. Look at this battle. Penn. That's just outstanding defense. And by Moore Dubois. gets the rebound. El Amin, lob pass, Jones, what a snag. But Jim, it all started with Ricky Moore's defense on Scooney Penn. He just won't let him penetrate. And then he went and chased down the rebound. Terrific job by Moore on the defensive end of the floor. A 20, and UConn has its largest lead of the night. Well, Tuesday on JAG, a crippled aircraft carrier leaves a flight of planes with no place to land. Who is trying to take out the Navy? An explosive all-new JAG Tuesday on CBS. Jim, you were talking about uh, the, the Big Ten and how well they did, they did this year. The Big Ten's the first team, and this Ohio State club was the club, to go to three straight Final Fours. They did that back in the 40s. They, they then did it again in the 60s. The great Jerry Lucas, John Havlicek teams went to the Final Four three times in a row, 60, 61, and 62. They won in 60 as sophomores, then lost to Cincinnati in 61, and then lost again to Cincinnati in 62 as they came into the tournament, the number one ranked team. And then only Cincinnati had it three years in a row, only to lose uh, against Chicago Loyola. Reese, and tipped up once. Chased down by Red. This is the ninth Final Four trip for Ohio State, but first since 68. An empty trip as Moore comes out with it. Four on two. To Saunders, pass this a little too low. Below the knees. Ricky Moore's got to remember that it's Saunders, not Freeman. Not quite as good a catcher on the break. Ten-point lead. Timeout on the floor. Hamilton leading the Huskies with 20 points and solid from the field in this game. Jim Nance, Billy Packer back here in St. Pete. How about the pass from El Amin? Well, remember, Moore started this all with great defense. A beautiful lob. El Amin on the catch, recognizes where Jones is, and look at this catch, Jim, and a finish. Rashmel Jones. You know, you, you look at this young man. I mentioned he had 31 starts as a sophomore. He was the Big East All-Tournament player last year as a junior. That 17 points, nine rebound game against Syracuse. So we're talking about a very solid player. Full court pressure now. Little zone, 2-2-1 two, two, by Connecticut. E.J. Harrison defending and reaching in. Now Connecticut can afford a foul Come by Harrison. He's into the game just to try to occupy Penn for a couple of minutes. Save Elamin and Hamilton on that bench. UConn with three subs on the floor right now. Harrison, Saunders, and Jones. They're just not getting good screens on Moore to free Penn up. Reese. That counts. No call. Oh, it should have been. That ball should have been a goal 10. Jim O'Brien thinks so. Saunders with the swat. 20 on the shot clock. Ohio State's missed its last six. And a hold called on Freeman. Freeman a foul on West. <laughs> on, on Reese, rather. There's the shot on the way down, no question. Once that ball starts in its downward flight and you touch it, it's two. 
Reese working hard, makes it home. A nice job for the sub. Got four off the bench. Johnson been on that bench for quite some time. He got back in now, so the shot blocker is back in the game. Hamilton will be coming in on the next whistle for UConn. It's tough to find their points on the floor right now. There's uh, Red now on Moore outside. Freeman. Boy, I'm surprised he didn't try to take Johnson. He's quicker from there. Jones. That was a two. He had a foot on the line. Savovich, good block out. Ten minutes to go in game one. Jim, Huskies lead by eight. You notice there are no back screens on Moore. They can't seem to free Scooney Penn to create the switch where somebody other than Moore's got him head to head. Jones reaches in. Saunders ahead to Freeman, and he's tripped by Penn. Oh, and he came down on that wrist. And look at Scooney Penn, a former player in the Big East. He was the player of the year in the tournament. Back in 97, right, Big East he, tournament. Right, when he played at, at BC. So he's familiar with playing against Connecticut. We ought to point out, Jim, there you see the trip. Ter certainly inadvertent. But uh, Jim Calhoun's got an 18-game win streak on Jim O'Brien going head-to-head -head when Jim was back at a coach at BC. Well, Jim O'Brien says Jim Calhoun owns me. Well, and surprising, Jim O'Brien started his career as a coach as an assistant at, at Connecticut. UConn. Right. Yep. And you know, yesterday he was so kind to talk to us for, for that long. And, and I asked him a question that really I, I was very interested in. I said, did you ever envision when you were an assistant at Connecticut that they could ever have a basketball program like this? And he said, Billy, not in the wildest imagination did we ever have the goal that Jim not only had the goal to do, but accomplished at Connecticut. At that time, when he was an assistant, he said we just wanted to be the best team in New England. Now, Red. That's got to count, too. Ricky Moore locked it, but it's goaltending. There aren't many guys in the country better offensively than this young man right here. Beautiful layup, and you can see the ball hit the backboard, which you can still go and grab it there, but once it hits the backboard and starts down, it's too late. And Ricky Moore gets a piece. Are you certain that ball was on the way down? Did it look like yep. it to you? Yep. Okay. 12 points for Red. El Amin back in the game. Ricky Moore's got a guy he can beat off the dribble right now in Savovich. He's quicker. Good screen by Vosco. Oh, great screen by Vosco. Set everything up for Freeman. Freeman read it. I mean, uh, Hamilton read it perfectly. 53-45. It's been about this eight-point margin most of the half. There's the solid screen for Penn. Penn too strong. Out to Savovich. What a solid game. Reese blocked by Bosco, and they say he got a piece of the arm. His third. Well, Tuesday, the long-awaited premiere of the Late Late Show with Craig Kilburn. An hour of comedy, celebrities, and his famous five questions. And Jim Savovich is having a very good game off the bench. It's from Montenegro, Yugoslavia. You can imagine what that young man is going through right now in terms of the crisis back in his homeland and still being able to concentrate on basketball. His uh, hometown about 100 miles away from the center of all that strife. He's checked with his family and his parents are fine back home in Yugoslavia. And he moved to New Jersey, played at Eastside High School, but uh, is obviously not far removed from that turmoil and conflict. Eight and a half remaining here in St. Petersburg. And to Vosco, who was held by Reese. Very good positioning by Jake Vosco that time. He had Reese on his back and just held him there with good positioning. Neither team, in my estimation, has played as well as they can play in the half-court set. You know, a lot of these points have been scored on uh, actually transition baskets. There's a push by Singleton. Gets away with it. Hamilton likes to stay there with Reese and hey, just clear it out for me. And Bosco oh, can't boy. believe it. They're going to call him for his fourth. 
as Singleton was tangled with him. Give him the Oscar, Jim. That's three. That's three today that he has been able to pick up Singleton by just going ahead and giving up to the power when he gets faced with any kind of touch. Watch this inside. Now he's banging just as much as is Vasco, but now, oh goodness, I've been injured. I'm going to the floor. And he wins. Wow. That little fella from Italy would only wish that he could <laughs> act like that, huh? Tell you what, some UConn fans want to hop over some seats after that call. So one and one here. And it rattles out. Savovic almost tipped it in. Juan with the rebound. Nobody blocking out Savovic. He is having a very good game. Just a freshman. And he will be joined next year by two more kids from Yugoslavia. So uh, Ohio State will be well served there. They can play like he can. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Now Elamin thinks that he can take Savovic. He'll take the three instead. I'm surprised he didn't drive. Had a quickness advantage. Didn't take advantage of it. Again, just when UConn looked like it might blow it open, they've just run dry on the offensive end. Penn pull up. Well, he didn't expect to be that wide open. And more out battles Reese for the rebound. Good idea by Elamine to pull it up. Saunders was there, but he knows he doesn't catch it that well on the run. Possession of the ball more important than trying to make the quick play. The floor leader, Elamine, signals 20. Verbalizes 20, and now he's looking for Hamilton. Red lost his balance for a moment. Hamilton comes up shy. Red reacts so well. There's that illegal dribble of his that he got by with that time, just cupping the ball. Hamilton was lucky to stay with him. Big shot here, Savovic. Short, and they got the numbers again. Got two ahead, El Amin. Bangs it home. Jim O'Brien can see things slipping now, Jim. It's one thing to get this break out, but now the clock is starting to become important. You get down almost by double figures. 16 for El Amin. Gotta put it right up. Savovic is hammered. He'll go to the line for two. The other thing I've seen to notice a little bit by Ohio State, I think these numbers that Connecticut's been thrown on them, wearing them down a little bit, even though this game hasn't been a high scoring game, it has been relatively fast paced up and down. Vosco has four for UConn. With Hamilton and Freeman with three, Savovich with three. He's at the line to shoot two. We saw Jim O'Brien, only the third coach to ever take Ohio State to a Final Four, joining Harold Olson and Fred Taylor. Vosco, there he is with four. You, know, you, you mentioned Ohio State had played in the 1939 Final Four, very first one in Evanston, Illinois. And they were able to also, well, they didn't win. Oregon and the uh, tall furs of Howard Hobson won that first championship. But the Buckeyes delivered the first outstanding player of the Final Four, Jimmy Hall. Who will it be here in St. Pete? Savovic with a make and a timeout on the floor. Ohio State only 22% from the field in the second half. We'll be right back. Connecticut with a seven-point lead, Billy, with 6.22 remaining. Jim, very dangerous time for Ohio State. Now, they not only have to get some defensive stops, but I think they're going to have to figure out a way to get Scooney Penn free some. And there's a young guy sitting there watching this game that's very important to this team. Yeah, that's the father of Ricky Moore, Buck Moore, who's one of the premier caddies on the PGA Tour. You know, the family's from Augusta, Georgia. And, uh, well, Ricky, during his teenage years, used to wait tables at Augusta National. And this man right here, very important because Ohio State has not been able to get Scooney Penn open very much with Ricky Moore on him. I, I really think they've got to set some solid screens to get Moore away and let Penn get opened up offensively. It can't be just Red's job to score here. Penn is three out of nine from the field in the game. Not enough shots in a game like this, Jim, for a guy of his caliber. 
Inside screening. Pretty good job by Ohio State staying with it. Six minutes to go, and UConn in no hurry. Into Freeman. Taken away by Red. Look at his ability to dribble that ball, huh? Quick hands. Good stop for Ohio State. Freeman thought he could take Johnson. It wasn't quite there. Johnson, hook shot for two. Jimmy loves to play against smaller people. Now, remember what he did to Ron Artest. He said, a guy that size can't guard me, and Freeman found that out. Good job by Johnson. Jim O'Brien told us Johnson's a young man who's really starting to enjoy the game of basketball, maybe for the first time in his life. And you can see it in his play. And here's Singleton matching up with Hamilton. Now I mean to Moore, and he's hacked. The CBS Sportsline stat of the game, second half field goal percentage, quite telling here. Ohio State only 25%. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. And 25% when they were shooting 50% in the first half. Something had to give there, though. Connecticut uh, yep. normally does a much better job on the defensively. Second on pin. Oh, uh, UConn has not allowed a, a team to shoot 50% on the field in over, well, 55 games. Jim, you know, when I look at Ricky Moore, I think of the team that got beat by Mississippi State. Remember, Ricky Moore hurt his shoulder in the regular season and hurt it again in the NCAA tournament. At that time, he was the player they needed to match up against That's Mississippi Ricky State. Moore. Didn't have him, and Jim Calhoun was knocked out of the tournament. Mississippi State obviously, obviously going on for the Final Four. That was one of the hardest losses for this program. The lose to Mississippi State in the Sweet 16. Ray Allen's last year. Brown wild oh. makes it in. Wow. That's the only thing he could do on that one is to slam it against the board. Could have shattered the glass. Yep, there was nothing left as far as a touch shot was concerned. Five-point game under five remaining. Hamilton wants to take over at this point. Oh, that wasn't going to go. Johnson stayed right with it. The last minute, he got it over to Freeman. Johnson has very good instincts as a shot blocker. Five on the shot clock. El Amin with the defender slipping. He'll take it to the hole, and it's from behind. Away. Up ahead to Red. More defending. <laughs> Red, the game is down to three. Little different story for Ricky Moore when he's got to guard a guy 6'6 six, six, than when he has to guard Scooney Penn. Red just took it to him. 22nd timeout, Calhoun and Connecticut. We're going to see a guy that knows how to put that ball on the floor. This is a great block from behind by Brown. And now watch Red. Runs it down and then crosses over dribbles. And with that 6-6 six, six, is able to put it away. Buckeyes will not go away. Four thirteen remaining. You know, Jim, Ohio State's had some uh, great scores. We mentioned Jerry Lucas, the incredible star, probably the greatest player ever to play there. But Gary Brads is a 64 National Player of the Year. He had six straight games where he scored over 40 points. As I said, National Player of the Year did play in 62 with that team, but then was great as an All-American in 64. Saunders thought about it on the post. Now here's El Amin. Off balance, but he drops it. Great penetrator. 59-54, under four remaining. Spread out. How about Johnson? Not going to go to him again? Brown, the freshman. Long rebound to Moore. I think it would have been smart to go down inside with Johnson, even with Saunders on him. Get something going inside, then back out. These possessions should be Johnson, Red, or Scooney Penn offensively, not Brown. Well, it's nice to see if you have a team like Connecticut where they're so blessed, Elamine or Hamilton can take you out in that 1-4 set. Hamilton top of the key. Good blockouts by everybody. Off the floor, Singleton saves it for the Bucks. 
spin and reach in on Moore, almost cleanly taking it away. And from behind. You see this, Jim? Lock it out on the inside. Now watch what Ricky Moore does if we can catch this. He actually pulled Johnson from behind with his shirt. A very dangerous play because you get caught for the intentional foul. Ten team fouls on UConn. It will be two the rest of the way for Ohio State. Scooney pin with one more. Johnson with a chance. Last touch by Ohio State. And a timeout on the floor. A tight one. In game one, Huskies lead by four. Each team with two full timeouts and a 20 also for the Huskies. And you were talking about Ricky Moore and trying to hold up that pass break a moment ago. Jim, he was very lucky here. The official didn't see this. See, Johnson's running. Moore grabs him by the pants. Johnson tries to get him away. That would have been an intentional foul automatic. Put Ohio State on the line for two and the ball. Trying to swipe Johnson shorts. Maybe we know now where Scooney Penn's uh, jersey might be. Uh, maybe, maybe Ricky took it before the game. Well, that wasn't and a, a matching pair. With the trailing official and the three-man officiating crew, that was not a smart play. 250 remaining Husky ball. State with their starting lineup on the floor, as is the case for Connecticut. Bosco looking in, looking in. Oh, Singleton. oh, now loses it. That should be double dribble. Singleton did a terrific job with low post defense on Kevin Freeman. There was no place to throw the ball. What are they calling here? A timeout? A 20 second timeout, which will deny the Buckeyes the ball. Now take a look, shot clock still at 15, so Connecticut has plenty of time to operate. Just when it looked like UConn was turning it over. Tonight after the final four on CBS, all new episode of hot new action show, Sam Hung and Arsenio Hall in martial law at a special time tonight on CBS. Jim, that was a set situation to try to post up Freeman inside. But give Singleton a lot of credit. He stayed with a guy that's very difficult to guard in the low post because Freeman's quick and he's strong. Now real important to get the ball with Elamine out here. They want to get Hamilton free. Pens on him. He can shoot over him if they can get him the ball. Elamine dribbles past the defender and it rattles out. Long rebound to Bosco. A huge get for the Huskies. It sure was. And they did a smart thing by bringing it back out. The clock is there. One of their teammates right now. Twice on this trip, it looked like they had lost possession of it. And it seems like they're trying to get the ball down inside to Freeman. Tipped out and just 12 on the shot clock. I think they should go 1-4 to Hamilton on the top. Call him a special play. Seven on the shot clock. He's got Scooney Penn down inside and can't get in the ball. Here he is. Hamilton. Hamilton puts it up. And he beats the shot clock. That's exactly what they wanted. Hamilton gets caught with Scooney Penn. Too small to guard him. The way to recognize what the defense is giving him. The horn sounded in flight. That's a tough break for Ohio State, Jim. They made some good defensive stops and couldn't put it away. Now Bosco's got his hands up. Is that number That's five? It. That's it for Bosco. And Jim, one of the things that Bosco has got to learn is to stay away from those cheap fouls. Remember when the game started, he picked up two that he really had no business getting. Going over the back and a rebound he had no chance for. And that's one of the reasons he gets into foul trouble. There's his father, Joe. Family is from Katy, Texas. Played at Tulsa, where he was an outstanding rebounder. He's actually still ninth all time at Tulsa as a rebounder. One big play he made in this game was on that last possession to chase down that rebound that resulted in a Hamilton basket. 
That is the second time this year he's fouled out, but more importantly, that, that's his 103rd foul he's committed this year. Red at the line for two. Just a sophomore on pace to one day be the school's all-time scorer. He would overtake Dennis Hobson. But the rebound to the Buckeyes. And All two players. Oh, Johnson and Singleton shared it. And that's a traveling violation. Boy, everything going wrong for Ohio State. They couldn't get possession down the other end with good defense. Now they've got two guys with possession, but they're on the same team. What a critical point. Just a minute and 21 seconds on the clock, and they turn it over. Well, they're going to have to now be very aggressive and even thinking about fouling some. Down to 110. They've got to get possession. You don't want to put El Amin on the line. Uh, he's a 78% free throw shoot. And again, and they almost, almost get. scored. Yep. More to Freeman. Caught underneath, and to Hamilton, one on the clock, almost for a second time. Penn takes middle. He'll drive it all the way up high. Johnson underneath. Tipped out and controlled by the Huskies. Freeman broke early. And there's a foul the more. It'll be a one and one, not a two shot situation. That's only the eighth team foul. If Jim Ricky Moore's an 81% free throw shooter. You got Hamilton on the floor, an 84% free throw shooter. Elamine, a 78 free throw shooter, so, and Freeman, 71. So it's hard to pick out a guy in this team to foul at this point. You don't have much choice. So Ricky Moore at the line, just an outstanding young man who his freshman year. First on the scene, looked as though he might help the team go to the Final Four for the first time. Injured late in that campaign, become the greatest defensive player Jim Calhoun says he's ever coached. One and one. Now this year in the Stanford game, he held Arthur Lee to four for 13. Held the team Cleves, who we'll see in the next game, to two for 15, and certainly did a splendid job on Scooney Penn today. Calhoun said he can control a game without even taking a shot. There aren't many players you can say that about. Knocks them both down. Ricky Moore. Ohio State's got to throw that ball up the court in a hurry now. Clock running against them. they got to think strictly three. 30 seconds left. Too much time. There's a three and a foul. They say more foul them in the act. It'll be a three-shot situation. Now, Ricky, Ricky Moore on this one, Jim, has got to use judgment here. That's going to be a very difficult shot to make. You just stay on the floor and let him put it up. You don't want to stop the clock. Call that on Hamilton. Now, he'll get three anyway. What I'm saying is you've got to go ahead and let a guy take a shot like that. The clock is your teammate. They've switched it. I, I was a bit surprised, and they announced it here. In fact, they presented 3-2 over to the bench. But it's on Moore, his second. And Ohio State defensively going to put some guys in the game to automatically and quickly foul. If they can get a chance, foul Saunders. Got two shots left. Got the first two. One more to come. They bring Brown in along with Reese. Sopovich out, Johnson out. And the object here will be to foul on that inbounds. Now, if you're Jim Calhoun, you have to get maybe Saunders out of there and get another free throw shooter in the ball game because you know what Ohio State's going to do defensively. Penn makes. They'll bring in the Sean Coleman for the shooter. And Saunders is a 62% free throw shooter. Everybody else that's on that floor can really shoot well on the free throw line. Right now. Missed the third one, and Saunders is fouled right away. So Ohio State didn't get the basket they wanted, but you know that might be a pretty good trade-off to be able to foul with very basically a second going off the clock. And still a one-and-one one one and situation one. Right. at the other end. Now Saunders, remember, in this half pulled up to, and took a, a nice jump shot from the top of the key and made it. Mm -hmm. Worked very graceful with that jumper. Yes, he sure did. A two-time All-Stater. 
from Waterbury, Connecticut. Sabovich back. One and one. Now, if you're Connecticut also, you want to pick up full court to not allow Ohio State to roll that ball down the floor. One and one. Well, there you go. There's the trade out. Pin with 21 seconds. Got to take another shot right away. Blocked by Hamilton. Red frees himself. That's a three. Dips down and out. Out to pin with nine seconds. Two eight. And a foul called on Saunders. Oh, boy. That's the last thing that Jim Calhoun wants is to stop the clock and put Ohio State on the line. But, Jim, not enough time now for Ohio State. Connecticut's going to advance to the championship game. And that's 19 in a row. Jim Calhoun over Jim O'Brien. Well, if they get Reese to make the first, miss the second, put back quickly, that's what they have to be hoping. I mean, it's the longest of shots. And Reese at the line, two shot situation. He will have two shots. Calhoun called the win over Gonzaga. One moment in time for us. It airbrushed over 75 years of history in the UConn program. And now they bring in Brown. Scooney Penn going to sit down, and Jim, maybe that number 12 jersey was lucky for him today. Mm -hmm. The 35 was that, unlucky. That's what I'm saying. 35 unlucky. Number 12 is what he normally wears. Reese missed them both. And that's another foul on Ohio State. And it's two at the other end. Double bonus. Scooney Penn, the guy that was the leader that turned around that Ohio State team, not only physically, but getting his guys to believe along with his coach that they could have a winning basketball team, not only winning, but one that could go into the NCAA tournament and survive. He'll be back next year, and this is going to be a fine team. Jim O'Brien said Scooney was the only one who believed we could make it here. Almost times wanted to tell him to cool it. You know, we had five straight losing years. A year ago, 18 straight losses at one time. Ohio State really hurt itself at the line. Nine of 18 free throws in the game. And Jim, you're looking at a club that's a you know, relatively good free throw shooting team from their productive players, but really weak on the other end, only as a team 61%, so not uncommon for them. Saunders gets the second to go. Jim wants, uh, Jim O'Brien wants a timeout. We'll take one with them. Five seconds remaining to make it official for Monday night and the Huskies. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, final seconds of the first semifinal game. And Ohio State and Jim O'Brien, after just the most improbable season, it looks like it's about to come to a close. An NCAA record tying turnaround for this team. And there's no one in this uh, profession that doesn't appreciate what Jim O'Brien did this year, his personal journey to the Final Four. Congratulations to Jim O'Brien and the Buckeyes. Good move by Connecticut here, trying to take away that opportunity to get the ball up the court easily. Penn puts up the shot, and the game is over. You can book it. UConn continues on to the Monday Night Final. First spot reserved Monday night goes to Connecticut. The Huskies will play either Duke or Michigan State. UConn a 64-58 winner over the Ohio State Buckeyes. And the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Michael Redd from Ohio State, 15 points and eight rebounds, and Richard Hamilton, the All-America, 24, leading the way for the Huskies. The Huskies have a date Monday night for the national championship. When we come back, Greg Gumbel will take it away here at the Final Four. Coming up, the Battle of 
the top ranked teams in the nation, the Duke Blue Devils and the Michigan State Spartans. Tip time is 8.17 Eastern time here on CBS. And in just a few minutes, we'll be taking you across Tampa Bay to Hoop City for the Gillette three-point challenge with $2 million on the line, $1 million for the contestant Alicia Brown of Riverside, California, and another million to be donated by Gillette to charity. Right now, let's go down to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Jim. All right, Greg, thank you. Khaled El Amin, congratulations, and Coach Calhoun, how does this sound? Monday night, you're playing for the national championship. That sounds awful good. Can you say it again, please? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to hear it a few times, yeah, I know, yeah. in the next two days. What was the difference in the second half here? Defense. Uh, you know, I think we had great spurts offensively, but then we kind of uh, relaxed or got too conservative offensively and then made some poor judgments. But defensively in the second half, the job on Scooney and, and just basically the squeeze down of the middle uh, was magnificent. I thought we did a terrific, terrific job. How about the play of uh, Mr. El Amin here and also Richard Hamilton, those two today? Well, they seemed to be able to seize that moment and they knew that this was our moment and I told them that before the game this is our moment on Saturday afternoon semifinals national championship and they made the plays in the moments. You know, one of the things I like about what you did today is when that jump shot from the outside was being pressured you took the ball on to the, the inside and made those floaters. Is it something you thought about consciously in the ball game? No I knew they were trying to take away my perimeter play and I just try to put as much pressure as I can and, and still try to get my teammates involved at the same time and it was just a great game plan by Coach Calhoun to get me involved and we just played better tonight. You will play better than because I've seen you guys play better. But you <laughs> right, know what? Right, There's only right. one other team in America has a chance to be where you guys are. So congratulations. Thank Coach, you. I know you still have the picture. Your little newborn granddaughter right there. I just have it. Yeah, there's yeah. little Emily. There she is. <laughs> what a March madness to remember. Born on March the 5th, your first grandchild. He carries the picture of this in his pocket. And he also carries the dream of a national championship in his heart. Congratulations, guys. We'll see you Monday night. The Yukon Huskies will play for the national championship, and we'll continue in just a moment. As we welcome you back to Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, where UConn has knocked off Ohio State 64-58 to advance to Monday night's championship game, the Spartans of Michigan State, the Blue Devils of Duke, have taken to the court to begin their warm-ups in preparation for the tip-off of their semifinal matchup. Tip time is 8:17 Eastern time. A short while ago, Bonnie Bernstein caught up with Ohio State Buckeyes coach Jim O'Brien. Jim, we've talked about it all game, how important it was defensively for your guys to stop the transition game. How much of a factor was that tonight? I think it was a huge factor. Um, I thought that for the most part we did a, a relatively good job in guarding them in the half court. But they do such a good job in forcing you to do things that you're not comfortable with on offense that it leads to turnovers or it leads to bad shots. And when they do that to you and you're not uh, efficient on offense, that's when they get out and they get transition. And that was the whole thing. I mean, they got so many baskets in transition. That's what really hurt us. Every time we tried to keep it a little bit close, they would just break out and make runs. But, uh, but our kids hung in there and we gave ourselves a couple of chances. But uh, they were a very good team tonight. When you look at the season big picture and all of the tight games against Auburn, against St. John's, tonight against UConn, and the fact that you've only got two seniors leaving, how encouraged are you to even just get to training camp for next year? Well, I'm, not, I'm really not thinking anything remotely close to training camp, uh, Bonnie. This has been a long, tough season for us. Uh, but we're very encouraged for, with the future. You know, we have some good kids coming, uh, a lot of kids returning. So I'm, I'm very proud of our team. We had a terrific season. And hopefully we can just build off this from here. Well, it's been an amazing turnaround. Congratulations okay, on a great thank season. You. Thanks. All right, Bonnie, thanks very much. Valiant effort by the Buckeyes, but they didn't give themselves much of a chance shooting just 24% from the floor in the second half of the game in the loss to UConn. We'll continue with more from St. Petersburg right after this message and a word from your local station. Game. They want to set a fast pace, and they'll dictate it as much by the defense as they will running off the offensive rebound. But here's what Duke does. Their defense is characterized by ball pressure, denial, and then tremendous rotation to help. They do perhaps the best job of anyone in America of keeping the ball on one side of the floor. Clark, what about Michigan State? How, what kind of game do they want to play? To counter all, out, to counteract all that Coach Majerus just said, I think you've really got to do a job trying to score before they get their half-court their half defense set, Greg. That means pushing the ball up the court. One of the key matchups to watch is Cleves and Avery. And then can Michigan State deny Elton Brand low post position with one guy so they can tag the three-point shooters. Clark, you and I have talked about the fact that there are, there are teams that want to adjust what they do when they come in and play a team like Duke. And I think Tom Izzo 
may have learned a lesson from last year and in not adjusting his game but to go out and play his game no matter who the opponent is. I think that's what you have to do if you've gotten this far then you don't want to be changing things you want to do what you do best and I think Michigan State is an outstanding transition team they do it because they defend and rebound and if they can do that I think they've got a chance. Rick I want to ask you one more question about Jim Calhoun it took you 15 years to get to a national championship game it took him 27 to reach this Monday nights. How do you think he's feeling right now. I, no one can describe there's no one in the whole state of Florida if not the eastern seaboard that feels better than Jim Calhoun and I'll tell you what he deserves it. All right coach coming up our second national semifinal game Duke and Michigan State will join Jim Nance and Billy Packer courtside right after this enjoy the game everyone here on CBS.